Here with head coach Fred McNair. Coach, getting ready for McNeese State this week. Just start off with an opening comment about McNeese in the week ahead. Well, I think, you know, that it's, it's, a, it's a great ball club. We done played them two years before. Uh, we lost by seven one game and lost by three down there at, uh, at McNeese. So, um, very challenging team, uh, great team to play. I um, think Coach Goff got a, got those guys on the right track. You know, uh, they haven't won a game yet, but they're doing some good stuff, offense and defense, to to look out for. You know, as a team, um, we're preparing, and like I tell the guys and the coaching staff, you know, um, it's not all about what they do; it's about how we do, and, and during the course of the game. So, I think if we go down with the mindset of, of making all the corrections that we made throughout this week in preparations, uh, be a good, be a great ball game to win for us. Uh, got a chance. Uh, it's another FCS team that's, that's that's probably been in the rankings for a while, been winning championships uh, in the Southland. So um, it'll be a very exciting game for us this week. Coach, so much has been made of schedules lately, and, and you look at the schedule you've had, Tulane, number 10, Stephen F. Austin, McNeese, a perennial power in the Southland and, and the FCS. Just talk about how it helps Alcorn moving forward and, and why you want to schedule the best. You know, the biggest thing is, and you know, our commissioner says it best in terms of what we need to do to get a, a team in the playoffs and a team in the uh, Celebration Bowl. That's the way we do it. The strength of your schedule uh, will be we're pretty much based at, off that. So. You know, if we just go out and, and, and finish the year out the way we should, where we think we should as coaches, I think we'll be set great for either um, either one of them, uh, the playoff or either the celebration bowl. So we just, our toughest task is just getting the guys ready to play. And as coaches, that was our job to, to make sure these guys are uh, properly prepared to play. And, you know, the biggest thing is, um, you know, it kind of helps us out in preparation for our schedule. Uh, never to say the less, we have, we have a great conference. We have a great conference. Uh, we got some of the great competition in our conference, so uh, not knocking them or, or our conference, but you know, just the, the speed of the game is totally different uh, when you're playing an FBS team in, in terms of that and some of the athletes they have that's going to be on the next level. Uh, going to the NFL, you know, how well can we compete against that talent they got? And you know, as coaches, you know, we look over to the sideline, they got they got so many, so many assistant coaches, GAs, and and analysts, and they have a lot of things that. They kind of break down film with, so we have we have challenged ourselves to to make preparation to play the old football team. I think we do a pretty good job of preparing. Coach, last year, fam, you get into the playoffs as a as an at large, and and obviously Jackson State going to Celebration Bowl, and you've been to Celebration Bowl numerous times. Did that really help last year with the scheduling and and moving forward, knowing that you know what the SWAC can get an at large bid now? Yeah, it did because I think uh, fam, you play some competitive teams out of their out of their conference, out of the conference, and. Uh, the non-conference schedule was very competitive. And you look at their schedule and things they did and how they finished up, uh, you know, they have a chance to get in the playoffs. So they end up going to, I think it was Southeast Louisiana, uh, playing them down there in Southeast. And, you know, very competitive game. And, and that was one of the things that we were looking for in our conference is the at-large bid to a playoff uh, and one team going to the Celebration Bowl, and which uh, FAMU did last year and Jackson State went to the Celebration Bowl. So uh, very excited about what the, the moving forward, the way this – this, uh, this conference is leaning in terms of moving forward and things of that nature. Coach, moving on to McNeese here, what have you seen on tape from them? Obviously, their record is not indicative of what they are. They 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 had what, what you call a guarantee game last week as well. Just talk about what you've seen on, on film and in the stats and what they do that's really going to pose a problem. Dynamic at receiver, you know, um, the things they do out of their personnel package and the, they got a two-headed quarterback system. Uh, that's going to run, and uh, I think one is great at throwing the ball, and one is great at running the football. So we got to contain both of them, and plus their passing game. So uh, defensive wise, we we known Coach Peckeroy for a while, and all the things he does on defense. So um, he's going to get in multi fronts and stunts and all that kind of stuff. So we, I think we prepared for it this week, um, not any other week that we've not been prepared. So all the weeks we prepare and make preparations to win ball games. And, um, and that's what we intend to do. You know, we, we, we prepare this team to win. And if they do what they're supposed to do at any given time, you know, it just gotta, the ball kind of bounce away. We just got to stay healthy. Coach McNeese has a receiver etching up the charge, kind of a lot like Gibson with, with Stephen F. Austin. And, and they've got, uh, you know, some pretty strong running backs. You already mentioned two-headed quarterback system. Just talk about what they've been able to accomplish, even though they might be 0-2, what they've been able to accomplish and what you've seen that that is dangerous that you haven't already talked about. They're very excited. they got some uh, nippy receivers. Uh, Mason Pierce is one of the guys that, that they're going to try to get the ball to. You know, they – they're very dynamic in the receiver position, and they, they throw it to him. He's a short in stature, but he can get down the street, you know, pretty good. So 
uh, those things of that. You know, they got a, they got linebacker cores that makes tackles and and um, they really fill the gaps. And uh, we just got to be on our game. We just got to go and play a solid, uh, brave football brand uh, brand of football. So if we do that and do what we're supposed to do, I think everything when it, when I'll watch it over with, um, we'll see how it turns out. Coach, talk about their defense. You already mentioned they got a linebacker core that's that's pretty solid. They fill in the gaps. They kind of shoot the gaps a little bit. You look at the defensive line. It's not indicative of, of what they really are because they played FBS uh, already. Just talk about the defense and, and what they bring to the table. You know, Cordell Williams, he, he's, a, he's a linebacker that leads the teams in tackles and uh, does a great job at that. Um, they real long up front. They real long up front, big up front. So um, we just kind of we just gotta make sure that we – uh, making our calls right up front, putting our guys in the best position. As soon as our quarterback on the line, so uh, he make all the right calls. We make the combos and things of that nature and blocking, and also protecting the quarterback. They got a pass rush and they they very capable of getting to the quarterback. So we just got to make sure that we're protecting and, and open up lanes for us to run. And and on the other hand, we just got to make connections on the big plays. You know, we got to take advantage of each and every opportunity that we have. Uh, in terms of open receivers and, and catching football and, and finishing, the, finishing the drive is the biggest thing. Coach, how much does it help having a guy like C.J. Bowler, uh, Jarvin Howard, and, and then, of course, uh, Aaron Allen, having been at the FBS level and be able to talk to the team this week and say, guys, Tulane's behind us now is moving forward is everything on the line right now. You know, Howard came up to me last week against Tulane. He just told me at halftime, you know, what he's thinking the process and, and how he felt and everything like that. You know, he's been on that FBS level, uh, understanding the system, understanding how it works. And, uh, you know, C.J. Bowler, you're in the same place. You know, he's been, he, he been on that competitive level like that, uh, been in the FBS at Vanderbilt, uh, played some games at Vanderbilt, you know, as a freshman. Um, you know, the biggest thing is that those guys can talk to these guys and get them to understand this is how it's going to work. You just got to be prepared, prepare yourself for each and every practice uh, to come out and work hard and compete every day. As a CEO of this, Coach, that, that's kind of the, the thing that you have to be as a head coach. Now, you're more CEO than coach and anything else. What was your message this week to get the guys to understand, look, everything is what we want is still all to play for. Oh, it is. I mean, it's right in front of us. It's right in front of us. It's just laid out for us. And, I, and the biggest message for this week was uh, do your job. You know, everybody do their job. Whatever the play is called, whatever the defense is called, just do your job. And um, if they do that, I think we'll be, we'll be well set at the end of the game uh, for this victory, um, to come out on top of McNeese State. But they just got to just do their job. And we talk about it all the time. It's just the little things, you know. Little things matter, you know. Uh, so we get that done. And... Um, understand what we got to do, the purpose of it, um, and just do their job. That's basically the message for this week. Coach Ellis had a big game last week. You, you also talk about uh, Claude was, was in there on some stops, as well as Tyler uh, picking up the phone. But just talk about the defense last week and, and what you've seen in their improvement so far. You know, the biggest thing is from week to week, you want to see some kind of improvement. And that was improvement from last week, from the first week to, to last week against Tulane. You know, um, uh, Ellis making tackles, lead the lead, lead team in tackles uh, last week. So that was a big improvement. Somebody out of the norm come up and make plays. When Claude, Claudine Shirley's went down, you know, he came up, stepped up, made plays. Um, Trevor Jane made some tackles, you know, had a sack. And, and, you know, those players like that that needed to step up and play a role, they did it last week. And that was a big improvement from the first week. You know, had guys out of the norm that made plays. And, uh, and that's what it's going to take. It's going to take It's going to take the team. You know, that's why we always talk about together we rise. And, um, you know, we always going to lean on that and and, um, and make plays and, 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 and just be there for one another. Coach C.J. Bola comes into it now, and I believe it's 11 or 12 straight games. Excuse me, I think it's uh, 16 straight games that he's had a completion uh, or a reception. Now, just talk about what he's meant to this program since he's got here. Who's that? C.J. Oh, C.J., C.J., he's an he's outstanding player. I mean, he's fast, make plays, high points to football, and – and catching the ball well. So well, hopefully that able to continue uh, this weekend against McNeese and hopefully have more catches than he did in the previous games. So um, he's an outstanding player, you know, very, very, um, I would say calm and relaxed and, and just come out and play the game, come out and practice hard each and every day. You know, that, that means a lot because when other players see him doing it uh, on his way out of the senior year, you know, hopefully go out with a bang and uh, got a chance to, that's one of the players that got a chance to go to the next level. You know, uh, he got a good chance. So he just got to continue to do what he's doing with growth and, and the things we asked him to do. Coach, who were you impressed by last week that got in that, that normally wouldn't see a whole lot of playing time? But who were you impressed by? Was it Quinn? Was it uh, some of the other guys that, 
that kind of uh, came on late and, and really used the most of their minutes? Who who was it that really caught your eye? Well, the biggest thing, I think Leatherwood, the running back Leatherwood, when they put him in, uh, he ran the ball very extremely hard. Uh, and that's one of the guys that's going to do what, do what you asked. Um, you know, and do what he told and stuff like that. So he came in and, and ran the ball very hard. And one of the, one of the guys that got a lean forward that never get knocked backwards. So his lean forward going to give him an extra two yards. So that's what I like about Leatherwood. He come in and he don't complain, just go to work. Javante got some playing time last year and then obviously Duffy and now you bring in Howard. Coach, you really do. We, we talked about it preseason. You have a monstrous backfield in, in with running backs. Just talk about how much that's going to help going forward. It will because you know during the course of the course of it's a long season. Uh, during the course of the year, you need people to come in and, and and be able to establish themselves as well and keep the offense moving when you hand the ball to them. So I think those three guys and and with PJ Rogers on the, on the BJ Rogers on the back end of it, uh, you know. Those guys are phenomenal together. That room, like I said, that room is a great room. And I think Coach Booz is doing a great job with that uh, with that room, uh, keeping those guys humble and and ready to play. Coach uh, Coach Cedric Thomas at the end of the game at Tulane was was telling, "We're going to get back up. We're going to get back up." He remains positive. He was talking to the guys. Is that who he is? Is he just that positive guy that always believes everything's going to be okay? Coach T brings positive energy to the practice field, to the locker room. Uh, you know, during the course of the Stephen F. Austin, he gave a big speech in the locker room while he was on a delay, and the kids enjoy him. They enjoy talking to him. The defense really loves him. Um, but, you know, that's who he is. And, um, you know, that's why he's back here, you know, and that's why I got him back here to, to be, the, be the focus point of the defense, the defensive coordinator, and does a real good job of communicating, you know. So he does a real good job in his, in, in his craft, you know. Um, while he was gone, he, he shortened up his tools a little bit. So he's able to bring that back to the table. So uh, he's a great individual. Not only that, you know, he's just a great guy all, all around. Coach, we always do it. Well, what's one word to describe all going football this weekend against McNeese? I would say we got to be great. we got to be great. Uh, the thing we do this weekend, we got to be great at it. We can't have no mistakes, and we just got to continue to push and, and be great at what we do. Uh, brave brand of football. Got to be great. Coach, together we rise. Together we rise. Thank you, Coach.